This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Y'all, y'all, y- this just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. Yes, yes. Monday. Let's dive right into it. Yeah. Let's dive right into it because we're talking about Father's Day and some stars posted about how they celebrated their Father's Day on Sunday. JLo sent a sweet message to her husband, Ben. She posted this throwback photo of him calling him, quote, our hero. Right. I'm here for it. Okay. I'm here for it, Ben, oh for gosh. fans. You are such fight a the good contrarian. Fight. Yeah. This is, so, sure. this is, this is sure. Pearl Harbor. It's shot from his headshot from Pearl Harbor. We got I'm it. I'm so here. I love it. It's kind of like trolling all the haters. I love it. Rihanna's partner and father of her two boys, ASAP Rocky. I have a like a little bro crush on yeah. ASAP Rocky. Posted a video on Instagram as part of a campaign for fashion brand Bottega Venta and praise all the proud dads out there. Emma Hemming Willis and Demi Moore shared these photos of Bruce Willis with his five daughters and his granddaughter. Jada Pickett Smith praised Will for being a devoted girl boy dad. So just a dad. Yeah. Just a dad. <laughs> Chris Jenner posted this collage of all the dads in her life, including her ex, Caitlyn Jenner, and Kim's ex, Kanye West. He made the cut. Mm-hmm. Guy Fieri reflected on his first Father's Day without his dad, who passed away sadly earlier this year at the age of 81. And Mark Zuckerberg celebrated his dad, Ed, by taking the whole family aboard a $300 million super yacht in Mallorca. Proud of you, son. <laughs> <laughs> What if he was an old school dad that still wasn't good enough? He was like, this is all you got? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? where's the big yeah. one? It's an A minus. Where's that A? Yeah. What did yeah. you do for Father's Day, Tori? I know um, your dad was my, in town. We yes. Had, my yeah. father came in. He hasn't been here in 10 years because my mother's been so ill. And he flew in, saw the house um, that we had built together. And he also went to dinner with all of us. He went on TV. We went to restaurants. And eventually went to the Rockies game with Al, which was very exciting. This is us at the game. Aww. We had great seats. My dad wore this is us at a restaurant. It was just lovely to have him and sort of learn a new relationship with him. I'm going to have a new relationship with him without my mom, mm-hmm. and I've got to learn what that's like. And well, it, yeah. You know, it, it was a lovely Psst, Sarah and I were talking about that on our way home after Are I you? dropped uh, your dad off at his hotel. I was just like, I hope Tori gives herself space to realize that your mom was such a force of nature that like a like a planet like she drew everything towards her and now you and Jerry are just kind of like hey who are you now exactly. what are you into now and so like embrace that it's going to yeah. be weird quiet times sometimes but it's like you get a chance to meet your dad again exactly. i think that's awesome thanks for saying so, that so hey i, you, I saw you. when we went out we all went out to dinner this weekend but the way you looked at your dad is something that i've never seen like before really yeah it was just like the the connection you two have i like it was noticeable i was just looking at you at one yeah. point i was like Wow, I like this Tori. Yeah. No, I, love I love you. I love you. But it was a great no thing. I really did. That. I saw a different side. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. very, And very so sweet. Tori was gracious enough to share her dad with me on uh, Father's Day weekend, so I appreciate that. I just FaceTime with the kiddos, but I want to know what you did with Roosevelt. Well, Roosevelt is back in the Midwest. I will see him in, uh, well, very soon, a mm-hmm. matter of weeks. And I called him. He was out on in his Corvette with the top down cruising <laughs> yes. around uh, the neighborhood. Corvette. That should be a Father's uh, Day meme. Yeah. Just like I made it. Like my kids are grown. <laughs> I'm good. We just think it's funny that he has a Corvette, but I did make a post um, because as much as he gives like gives me so much grief about taking photos and oh you got to get the phone out oh well if it if we if she don't take a picture it didn't happen apparently but then he's the first one to be like. Oh, well, my daughter posted this. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, so I'm He's like, very proud. all right, all right, He's got it. Proud. Look at what that, about man. you, Jeff? Um, I just was kept it simple. I went fishing with my kids, took them fishing, had a great day. And yeah, there we are. Look they did, they that. caught all those fish. They got their little poles there. So we had a good Look day fishing. And then uh, we went up to the mountains, the little town called Morrison, where mm-hmm. uh, Red Rocks Amphitheater mm-hmm. is, had a lovely dinner there. And uh, then I went home and partook in some. Um, yeah. What do you call Father's it? Day drinks. Libation. Yeah. Libation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. read Tequila Mockingbird. <laughs> yeah, with the family. So we just sat there and, you know, kind of 
talked. It was beautiful. I FaceTime with my dad, and uh, yeah, it was just a lovely day. Keith, nice. yeah, big Keith. Aww, that's, that's awesome. Nice. It was a nice day. That's nice the way to do it. That's, that's the goal, exactly. bro. That's what we should do. All right, let's get to this next story. Kate Middleton made her first public appearance since announcing her cancer diagnosis. She attended the Trooping of Color on Saturday, which is an annual event celebrating the King's official birthday. Kate looked happy with all three of her kids and Prince William on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. There they are looking very royal, but in an Instagram post she said she has good days and bad days going through chemotherapy and said she is not out of the woods yet. It looks great there. Looks I don't know great. if that's any indication of anything, but she looks fantastic. She looks great there. Let me tell you something about the royal family, because, you know, I went there for the wedding, so I am oh, an expert. Oh, we remember. You understand. You yeah. understand. The royal pub. The, that's right. Um, but they do, often don't show sickness. Famously, Queen Elizabeth's father um, had lung cancer, and he kind of kept it hidden for a little bit. Um, they don't like to show any kind of weakness. Mm. Stiff upper lip all the time. Charles has cancer. You, you're not going to hear a lot about this. She is somewhat modernizing the monarchy as we speak about sickness and health and illness and I impressively uh, being open that it's not all good even just that little bit of insight into her is helpful now if I were in charge of the monarchy I'd ask her to little be a bit more open I think this is really relatable I think this could bring people closer to the monarchy but they're gonna keep it pretty separate they're not gonna give a lot of details but I was hoping it was gonna get us closer because how many people in England are dealing with this at the exact right moment that she is I think my question is and I want to ask you guys do you think the monarchy wants to be relatable? Because no. we're they're, they're not only the, the place they hold in people's they lives away. is they are up here. I don't think everybody always wants to relate to people that they see above them. I think they want to imagine that they live this perfect world and that's kind of they're living vicariously through them. So they wouldn't want to be exposed to that in a selfish way. I think that we have had this conversation in a lot of different ways when it pertains to Harry and Meghan because they came across a lot more accessible yeah. than we had historically mm. seen. Right. And I think in an age of transparency, no one really cares. I mean, you think of celebrity and how famous people are and how accessible they seem See. to be. And then you have this very old, antiquated institution trying to keep things status quo and I think they've been receiving a lot of backlash for that reason yeah. so this is very interesting obviously we wish her well and no one should be forced or outed to have to speak about what they're going through especially a cancer diagnosis but um, I think that people there are very interested yeah they so. want to know yeah, yeah. it's just sad King Charles finally takes the crown and, and then, now this is kind of the, the almost immediately the, yeah almost immediately. he waited everything. forever yeah <laughs> and then, yeah. Then. well i'm glad she's being transparent like you said coming up on dbl we're talking with actor danny pino stick around for his shirt that he's wearing all about transporting back to the 70s for a new crime drama and we're talking about the stars at the tony awards from angela jolie bringing her daughter to brooke shields wearing crocs
Welcome back to DBL. That was Ariana DeBose performing a tribute to Cheetah Rivera Ooh. at the Tony Awards last night. Tori's very excited. This is her Super Bowl. Oh, Jeff. the Tony. Yes. Oh. I love it. So the awards honored the, honored the best on Broadway, of course, but the theater was packed with Hollywood stars like Angelina Jolie, who matched on the red carpet with her daughter Vivian. Looking cute there, huh? Yeah. She was like the, the lead producer for The Outsiders, which won for Best Musical. Angelina also showed off a new tattoo on her chest of a bird. It's a swallow. They're the first bird sailors see when they get to land, so they know they're near. Oh, Stands that's for interesting. Hope, for hope. I was already asleep during the Tony. So I'm <laughs> Brooke Shields wore a sunny yellow gown and matching yellow Crocs. She said a few days ago that she had double toe surgery. A double. Oh, Do she a little had bogo. Double, double Buy one toe surgery. Oh, my gosh. Free. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, toe bogo? <laughs> toe bogo. <laughs> <laughs> and some big name actors picked up their first Tony, like Sarah Paulson and Jeremy Strong from the hit show Succession. Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe also got his first Tony. He looks exactly the same. He does. He really He's does. 108 years old. <laughs> but the big surprise of the night was when Jay-Z showed up during Empire State of Mind from Alicia Keys' Broadway show Hell's Kitchen. Fans were quick to notice, though. Jay-Z stayed out of the theater and rapped from the lobby. Uh, Alicia then came down the steps and sang the chorus. They were shown on the screen from inside the theater. That's weird. A little so weird. The, I want to talk to people inside the theater about that. Yeah. Like, can you bring that in here, please? Yeah. 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 We're, all in here. We're all in here. And some fans roasted Eddie Redmayne's performance from Cabaret, calling it terrifying. Let's watch. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. Where's the Sandman when you need him? <laughs> okay. No one got the Apollo joke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. funny. So, um, Cabaret is this wonderful performance uh, play in, uh, in the 1930s in Germany, right when the war started, and it's about people in a Kit Kat club, a nightclub, and there's Jews and there's gays, and it's all about what happens to them. And, and mm -hmm. um, Alan Cummings famously did it on Broadway not too long ago in the 2000s, and it was a huge, massive hit. My parents took me. Um, Sam Mendes directed it on Broadway. Wow. And it was massive. I don't understand the Eddie Redmayne look that they're going for or the way he He's pronouncing this. Um, in many cases, the MC he's playing is gay, and maybe that's part of this that the uh, dunce cap perhaps leads to that. Um, but again, it's all about Nazism and being different and standing out and finding your group of people. So that's what Cabaret is about. I would pref I, that one looks a little weird to me, <laughs> to be super honest. That was a love great the, breakdown. But I love the play. It's a great play if you haven't seen it. I think it won the Oscar, did it win the Oscar um, for the movie with Joel Gray and Liza Minnelli? So mm. great. Great, great Did you musical. watch the Tonys? Um, I saw parts of it, and I saw this Eddie Redmayne bit, and it just was not the cabaret I love, but everybody to their own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is theater. Yeah. Right, and it's open for interpretation. Right? Sure. But I do think that the most talented people in this business come from the theater. The stage yeah. is you know, it. The stage is That's, it. Yeah, I did sure. love his outfit. It was very cool. I, I was feeling that. Did you love leather. the Aaliyah decision to do the show in the lobby? <laughs> Good point. Not Aaliyah. Uh, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia Keys. What? Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Um, did you like that, that setup? Was, I mean, it's interesting. I feel like with Jay Z, there's always some underlying statement. Yeah. I, I don't know what that would have been about. Like, it doesn't. I, I don't know. I mean, did he not yeah. want to be around other people? I, uh, I don't know. It's very weird. <laughs> I just, I just thought it was strange, and I was hoping somebody had an explanation for that. But. No. No, not at all. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they go in my air three, and I'm I like, know. we do not have three I minutes know. left here. I yeah. heard it, I go, three, you want me to do cabaret again? <laughs> Tori would have started doing the... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, all right, they said 30. They How said much time we got left? 2.57. Welcome. <laughs> all right, that was a 30-second call. We filled it. Coming up on DBLR, interview with actor Danny Pino. He's telling us about the new crime thriller, Hotel Cocaine. What's that? about. Thank you.
Welcome back. You know him from his roles on shows like Cold Case and Law and & Order SVU. Now Danny Pino is taking on the role on the other side of the law in the new series Hotel Cocaine. Earlier we talked to him all about it. Check it out. Please welcome with a cute shirt on, Danny Pino! <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hello. 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 Yes, I, I second the cute shirt look. Mm -hmm. But let's jump right in, Danny. Hotel Cocaine is all about the 1970s drug scene in Miami at the Mutiny Hotel. But you didn't actually film the show in Florida at all. Why not? We actually shot in the Dominican Republic. And by the way, great pocket square. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> reciprocation. Stop. Reciprocation. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's mutual admiration society. Uh -huh. You know, we keep that going. I love it. Uh, you know, we, we shot in the Dominican Republic. A lot of the reason for that is uh, economic uh, in terms of there being, you know, uh, tax situations and uh, matching funds so that it makes the show, uh, you know, more affordable and easier to produce. Uh, but then I think there's also an, uh, an aesthetic quality to it. Miami is a, an incredibly cosmopolitan, uh, modern city. Uh, you know, in, in 2024. Uh, back in 1978, it was a, a, a city in the middle of a transformation, of a metamorphosis, as it were, from a sort of uh, retirement vacation spot to the city it is today. And so uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, although uh, Santo Domingo has those elements where it, it, there are uh, places that are incredibly modern, uh, and cosmopolitan. We shot in a place called Juan Dolio, which is about 45 minutes to an hour outside of the capital. Uh, and there were multiple times when myself and Yul Vasquez, both Miamians, you know, I was born and raised in Miami. He was born in Cuba, but raised in Miami. We would stand on a street corner or at the shore of a beach where we're about to shoot a scene. And we'd be, we, we'd say something like, this reminds me of Little Havana, mm. or this reminds me of you know, Virginia Key or Key Biscayne. The show does such an incredible job at the intricate details of the sets to make you really feel like you're in the 70s when you're watching it. Now, did you ever feel like you had just literally traveled back in time while you were filming? That's where you got the shirt. <laughs> yeah, he's still that's there. Where, that, that's where I got the shirt. That's where I got the chain. That's even where I got this fake ch uh, chest hair. Uh, the, the the reality is is you know when you step into Adela Cortazar's polyester shirt nice. or her platform shoes that she's meticulously coming up with uh, the wardrobe design or you step into Raimundo Cabrera's sets whether it's the Mutiny Club or whether it's uh, a hotel room uh, at the Mutiny or whether it's my own uh, character's personal home you feel like you are in the 70s. You are of that time. Uh, and then when you add a soundtrack right. uh, mm -hmm. with the incredible disco, uh, soul, or salsa music that was just beginning uh, to, to really pop uh, and that I think separates it from the Studio 54. This is the Studio 54 of the Caribbean. You play Roman Comte in the show who actually existed and was the manager of the mutiny. His son is actually the co-executive producer of the series. And I got to know, what were the challenges of telling a real person's story, especially when you're working with their family? Uh, it began with having a very deep conversations with Maurice about his father and his legacy. Uh, and not only as the, uh, you know, uh, the general manager of the mutiny, but also as a dad. Uh, which is really what our story is about. It's a, it's a story about family. It's a story about sacrifice. Um, it's a story about being, you know, separated from a brother uh, and then being thrust back into the orbit of a brother who is, uh, you know, the biggest marimbero uh, cocaine cowboy in Miami. And then uh, being put back into that orbit by Michael Chiklis, who plays Ooh, nice. uh, a, a DEA agent uh, uh, Zulio, uh, who inadvertently uh, begins to unlock who Roman really is. Danny, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations. DBL Nation, you can watch Hotel Cocaine on MGM+. Plus. The first episode is out now. Thank you again, Danny. We'll be right back. Thank, thank you, you for having me.
The Caribbean is calling you. This June, we're celebrating Caribbean Heritage Month with Sandals by giving away two all-inclusive vacations to any Sandals resort of your choice. Watch DBL every day for a word of the day. Then enter at dailyglasslive.com slash sandals for your chance to win a four-day, three-night escape for two. The winner will be announced on DBL June 26. Make memories for a lifetime and start entering for your chance to win a trip to any Sandals Resort. Today's word of the day is Cabana. Welcome back to DBL. One quick story before we go. Reese Witherspoon did a spot on impression of her friend Nicole Kidman at the recent AFI Awards honoring Nicole. Let's watch. And she's like, but do you see that director? It's incredible. Reese, we must get her. We must. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. You, you, you call her first. <laughs> it's pretty good. That yeah. was really, I thought it was really good. Tori, who do you think you could impersonate the best here? Um, oh, you mean of you guys? Yes. Um, or can you do Sam? Sam? Like, who can you do? I could probably do... Okay, I'll do you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Okay. ready? Get in a character. Okay. Sammy, we don't need to know about that. That is totally useless. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was pretty good. That, that was, was not bad. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Totally useless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he always says, Sammy. Okay, so Erica is, she just says the most beautiful thing, in the, and that's why the world works the way it does. Mm -hmm. And we're all like, <laughs> <laughs> that's Erica, right? Erica needs some work, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk slower. And no, then no, and then you just beautiful. need like an obscure bumper sticker quote, which I don't know where she gets all and these, and like stunning. injects it into the She's, conversation. It's stunning. But She's wait. like, well, I might be a cloud, but I'll be a rainbow in your cloud. And I'm like, my God, <laughs> season one, Jeff. I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> That's good. I don't care what's up there. We're done. We'll see you tomorrow.